Hey guys, what's going on? The first ever episode of the Let's Talk Shop webinar. Cannot wait to get started. It's going to be a big one. This episode is a huge topic and it's a question that I get asked all of the time. Um, and it's essentially how to handle your products that you no longer sell, your permanently out of stock items, your permanently discontinued items. So uh, let's get into it. But before we do, the beard. Yes, lockdown. Yes, quarantine. Yes, lots of facial hair. This is a little mini project that I'm working on. Oh, now I, I'm fine. I'm mentally okay, I think. Um, but this is just a new facial hair thing I'm, I'm trying. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Episode one, let's talk show. Let's go. Hi guys, welcome to episode one of the Let's Talk Shop webinar series. Um, can't wait to get started, this is incredible. So, what I will say first of all is uh, discontinued products, what are they and why is this important? So first of all, let me just explain that um, whether you're going into e-commerce for the first time, whether you're a startup business or you're kind of like peak enterprise with hundreds of thousands or millions of products, this is a really important consideration. Um, so whether, you, as I say, whether you're about to go in for the first time, whether you have a really big or number of, of big e-commerce stores, then this is a really big potential win, um, depending on what stage you're in right now. So what I'm trying to make clear is that's important, regardless of where you are in the spectrum. You might have one product for sale, 10 products for sale, um, or many, many more products. This is something that is, is hugely important. Um, today, we're going to talk about a, a number of pillars in the world of discontinued products. We're going to talk about SEO, um, conversion rate optimization, and how you can leverage your old products to, to, to sell more, essentially, um, user experience. And also, very briefly, we'll talk about analytics and, and how that works as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first of all, discontinued products. What is a discontinued product? So it could be anything from a permanently discontinued product, from like, God, never coming back, no longer manufactured, it's, it, it's not coming back. Right kind of down to something that you may have decided to deactivate. It may not have been a very good seller. Um, it may not have performed very well in certain campaigns. You decided to turn that product off. Uh, anything that essentially means this product is no longer available for sale is what I'm referring to here, by your choice or otherwise. This is what I'd consider as discontinued products. Um, so, as you can see, curries.co.uk. Now, these it's a huge website. If you're any, if if if, um, if you're listening or watching from the UK, then Curries is synonymous as a household brand. If you're outside of the UK, it's one of the UK's largest electrical retailers. They have um, a presence on the high street. They also have, of course, an online presence as well. They sell a bunch of stuff. Uh, in the world of electronics and, and, and white goods and so on and so forth. So really, really big and a, an awesome case study that I want to jump into. But what they're missing out on here is huge amounts of equity and also massive mistakes they're making in regards to CRO uh, and user experience uh, in that perspective as well. So let's look at a discontinued product that Curry's have, just as an example, just to get into this. So we can see here, there's a link here from Tech Radar, and I'm using Ahrefs, an incredible SEO tool that I love, I adore, um, and I highly recommend if you're in the world of SEO or you're looking to get into SEO, you should absolutely go and check it out. But today, I am using this to identify um, product pages on the curries.co.uk domain that have broken backlinks, uh, essentially for products. So it looks like they've, they've been turned off um, in, in, in most cases, and that's what I've found here. So the, the top most powerful broken backlink is from Tech Radar. Not a small site, actually one of the, the world's largest sort of content sites in regards to technology. So perfectly on brand. And you can see here, there's a link to this specific item here, um, which is a, looks like a home cinema system of some sort, a soundbar. So if I jump into this real quick, you get a 404. Bad news in all spectrums, right? So whether we're talking about SEO here, this isn't great. From a user experience point of view, this isn't great. From a conversion point of view, this isn't good. But from analytics, it's just, you know, again, we can talk about that in a little while. But staying firmly uh, in SEO at the moment, why is this a problem? Well, first and foremost, it's a backlink that they, they, they can't take credit for. So TechRadar, as we said, is a huge site. They're passing uh, a link out to Curry's um, 
and curries can't, can't capitalise on it because the link is broken. Another of the examples that I see in regards to discontinued products is brands that just redirect to another destination. So they might 301 redirect to a category. Um, they might 301 redirect, or you might 301, 301 redirect, sorry, to a brand or to the homepage, which is a big no-no, or somewhere else on the site. And I also want to explain in this webinar why that is not great, why that is not ideal. Redirecting is not necessarily the best way to go about this, but there's always exceptions to the rule. But typically, not really a good idea. So rather than a 404, what should Curry's do? What should they be, be looking at? And to kind of answer that question, they should be keeping the product online with a number of caveats, just to, just to be clear, but they should absolutely keep this product active online. And a particular retailer that has done this very, very well is Chain Reaction Cycles. Um, and here we go. So just switching over to this tab here. So here is a discontinued product that is available on, on Chain Reaction Cycles, um, or used to be, should I say, it's now effectively a discontinued item, right? So uh, an item back from 2017. Now, if you're not particularly au fait with, with cycling, or I'm a bit of a, uh, an amateur mountain biker, I'm in no way any good, but I, I enjoy getting outside and riding a bike, right? So typically, when it comes to bike components, um, they're renewed every, every season, every 12 months. So, you know, this is probably three years old. It's an item that is, is not coming back. The manufacturer probably doesn't make these anymore and Chem Reaction doesn't have any more stock. So it's, it's, it's a perfect example for a discontinued product. But the item is still online. It's still here, um, which is good. And I'll explain why. So rather than kind of giving that 404 page that Curry's did, the product is still here. They make it clear that the item's no longer available. Yeah, not great, but hey, you know, um, at least they're making that clear. But what they do and what they win you over with is kind of the trust signals that they're firing along throughout the page. So first of all, you've got your new customer voucher, £10 off, uh, £50 spend, which is a great way to kind of encourage um, first-time customers to spend some cash. Um, but then you've kind of got really good reviews here, free delivery, uh, one-year returns, the best price, credit options. They're kind of getting you to buy into the chain reaction cycles, eco space, the ecosystem, if you like, which is quite cool. But again, that's kind of boarded it onto UX and CRO, which I'm keen to leave into a specific section. But from an SEO point of view, this is powerful because all of the content is still here. Um, the product description, the images, the specification, um, the customer reviews, the FAQs, it's all here. And this is good news. So if anyone is Googling or anyone is searching online for this particular item or, or something that's in the description, then Chem Reaction Cycles is, is going to appear. Now, I get what you're thinking. Like, why would you want to rank for this? The product is no longer available. It doesn't seem to make sense. And this is kind of where we start to bleed into to CRO and UX a little bit. Because, yes, someone may decide to search for, for this item and realize that, you know, it, it, it's not here. But where chain reaction cycles have kind of missed a trick is they're not, what they could have done is upsell you or cross sell you to the equivalent model for this year. So the Spank Spoon 32 will set 2020. There's a much better chance that that's going to be in stock. It's probably still being manufactured right now. Um, and that's a really good way to sort of take someone from an item that's not available and inform them and educate them of the item or the equivalent item that is now available to buy online. And chain reaction cycles haven't quite got that. But sticking again with, with SEO right now, um, this content is still here. This is great. The product is here. And as a result, another important thing is as well is that the bat links still count because the page isn't broken. It's not creating a, a 404. But they haven't redirected this even. I think that's a really good point for the for a really good point for the for reasons why I raised earlier, which is you can cross sell and you can upsell rather than kind of forcing someone to, to this year's model, which is kind of jarring. You're kind of allowing the customer to, to walk through that experience. But let's take a look at the source code of this site real quick, because it's not all perfect. And I want to talk about something really clear. So as you can see, we're struggling to find any no follow or no index tags here. So this internal link, that's not there. Um, Let's have a look in the head and see if we've got anything here. Uh, no, doesn't look like it. 
Okay, so after taking a closer look, it was clear to see that this item is still firmly indexable by search engines. Um, there was nothing in the head to suggest there was a no follow or no index tag. And on top of that, there was no canonical pointing to another location. I also had a quick look at the robots.txt file and there was nothing in there to suggest that this item should not be indexed. Um, so this isn't a great situation for chain reaction cycles. Uh, okay. So now I want to talk about it and make it very, very clear. There is a distinct difference between keeping something online, keeping an item online, such as this, and keeping it indexable. A big difference. Okay, so I am by no means advocating that you keep um, you keep a discontinued item indexable or accessible to search engines for this long. It doesn't make sense. You could very quickly be in a situation where you have more items out of stock than more items that are legacy or discontinued than you have actual items for sale, which is bad. You don't want this. But there is a definite perfect balance here. So it's a horrible turn of phrase, but it really does depend. Um, the how long you keep it in the index for depends on what it is you do as a retailer. So, for example, as I said earlier, in the world of chain reaction cycles, um, typically products change every year. So what I'd recommend here is that you keep the item in search engine indexes for up to 12 months after the item is discontinued. So let's say, for example, this particular item discontinued today. It would be a year from now until you decided to remove the item from the index. Now, I would probably recommend you do a no index. So rel equals no index to the page. Um, because ultimately what happens is no index graduates to no index, no follow after time anyway. Or you could absolutely use no index, no follow. So what happens here is, just to be clear, keep this product page online potentially indefinitely, depending on how many products you have in your your um, your e-commerce facility. But be very specific with how long you keep these products in Google or another search engines index for after the point in which they're discontinued. So yes, I've said 12 months, but if you're in the world of fashion or if you're in the world of fast moving consumer goods, 12 months is a fairly considerate window. You may find out something shorter, or if you're in the world of say collectors or one-off examples um, where you know, things are super rare um, and also super valuable and also have a lot of kind of potential long after something is sold. You might wish to keep them in the index longer than 12 months. It really does depend on your situation. But what I will say as a rule of thumb is if you have a really fast product churn, you're probably going to want to keep them in the index, say, six months. And if you have a slow churn or if you have products that have a lot of kudos post being discontinued, then you may wish to consider keeping them in the index for longer. But what I would say is keep the product pages online. Um, just don't keep them in the index online. So I don't keep them in the search engine index forever. And that's really, really important. So what chain reaction cycles have done here is it seems that even their discontinued products are in the index. It doesn't appear that they have prevented um, Google and other search engines from crawling and indexing this particular page, which isn't great. But then again, I don't know what their rules are. They might have a rule of, of five years or something like that. But it doesn't look like on the surface that chain reaction cycles are removing these from the index. So to look at another example of a brand that is doing well or doing better than delivering before a four like curries um, is John Lewis. So here's another example. Again, in the technology space, just by sheer coincidence. Um, but there's a laptop here, a Lenovo uh, IdeaPad 710S laptop, and it, it, it's no longer available online. In fact, I haven't taken a look. It's pretty much no longer available anywhere. But they've done the same thing. They've kept the product online, which is which is exactly what, you know, which is cool. This is what I'm recommending. It's great. So all the content's still here. They've made it clear that it's no longer available to your guarantee, all this sort of stuff. Um, but they've taken it a step further than chain reaction cycles have because what they're encouraging you to do here is go and look at other items from the same brand. Um, view all the other laptops, view all the laptops and MacBooks, all the electricals and so on, um, and top sellers from John Lewis. So they're kind of encouraging you to take a look at other parts of the site if we or, or take a look sorry specific items that are close matches to 
uh, the item that you're originally looking at. If we go back to chain reaction cycles for a second, we see that yes, they have recommendations, um, but they're not really in terms of they're not really in terms of um, they're not relative to the items that are came here to look at. They're just recommendations that seem to be quite generic at the moment, which isn't really great. So really what chain reaction cycles should be doing here is recommending items that are very similar in spec, in item, um, to what I was coming to look for, whether it's this year's model of the same thing or whether it's uh, exactly the same specification from another brand, or the, you know, same thing from the same price point, whatever that may be. And again, even John Lewis could make a little bit better because they could absolutely have a carousel here instead of just um, these buttons. So there's, there's a couple of things that they could have done. But to be clear, and then also if we look at... Um, the SEO for John Lewis. I don't know how long ago this item discontinued. I haven't taken a look, but it seems that, um, yeah, it seems that John Lewis have followed the same suit in the sense that items that are discontinued are essentially indexable and, and accessible to, to search engines, which again, isn't necessarily something I'd recommend as a long-term strategy. Um, so yeah talking about that sort of thing. So let's move on to CRO and UX just for a moment. So let's put yourself in the mindset of someone who is looking for a sandbar, going back to the Curry's example again. So this particular piece here on Tech Radar, as I've said before, Tech Radar is a big deal. And I get that this piece of content here is talking about the January sales, which is long gone. We're in, we're in April now. But this page will still get traffic. You have to try and put yourself with a mindset of someone who's going to be in the purchase funnel for a sandbar, for, a, for an audio piece of equipment, which is what this item was for. Um, what the backlink is pointing to is a, where is it gone? Here we go. A sandbar, a Sonos sandbar. Um, so, yeah, put yourself in the mindset of a customer for a moment. So what you're probably going to be doing if you're in the market for a sandbar is Google things or search online for things like best sandbars or best sandbars 2020 or sandbar reviews or this versus that. And in, as a result of doing that, you come across sites like Tech Radar, like What Hi-Fi and so on, which are really powerful, really established and trustworthy um, resources that give you know, or partial advice in terms of which item you should choose, depending on what it is you're looking for. So although this is for January sale, yes, um, I get that. It's an old expired, you know, sort of piece of content. There's probably going to be people who are still looking at this piece of piece of content. So anyone who is um, looking to buy is going to come across content like this, is what I'm trying to say. These are going to be customers that are ready or soon to be ready to hand over their money, ready to hand over their hard-earned and go and buy a sandbar, as per this specific example. But the issue is, when you go and click the sandbar link, which is listed somewhere down here, you're going to end up seeing this, a 404. It's not great. You know, think about that from a user's point of view, as I say real quick. It's like, it doesn't feel good, right? It's broken, it's jarring, it makes it feel that the, 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 the it might be a mistake or something's wrong or it's technically incorrect. Um, it doesn't feel good. You've put, you know, Curry's have potentially lost a sale here. And this is just one example. You know, Curry's have hundreds, if not thousands of discontinued products that are plagued with the same issue. However, if you offered an experience like this, or say even like, uh, what was it we had earlier, uh, like this, it's better because it just makes it crystal clear to the customer that the item isn't available and here are some alternatives you can go and take a look at and here's why you should buy from us um and so on and so forth but as i said it's, it's not perfect here they should absolutely be offering a recommendation they should absolutely be telling me that yes this item isn't available but here's an alternative that is just as good if not better here's other options you can go and take a look at i mean if you think about walking into the high street if you was to walk into a high street um, curries, you know, that's what you'd expect. You'd expect if you walked in and you had an interest in a particular sound bar and the sales assistant said, hey, look, we don't have that in stock. However, we do have this. That sales assistant is more likely to capture the sale than just saying, hey, 
you know, we don't have it. So it makes a heck of a lot more sense to offer someone an alternative uh, or a direct replacement rather than what they're doing right now, which is a broken page. So let's talk about analytics real quick. Um, no, no. Let's talk about a few of the best practice points of view that I want to make clear right now. Um, so when it comes to your discontinued products, there's a couple of things you absolutely want to make sure if you're going to turn these things back online. One is make sure you do not include discontinued products in your internal search engine. So here, as you can see, I've been playing around on the John Lewis site earlier. This is the Lenovo IdeaPad 710S. So if I search for Lenovo 710S and hit return, what I expect to see is for the products not to appear. And this is absolutely spot on because the last thing you want to be doing is pointing users searching internally um, to products that you don't sell anymore. The rule of thumb I typically recommend when it comes to discontinued products is if a user uses an explicit URL to get to a discontinued product, that is fine. But what you don't want to be doing is um, linking to your discontinued items internally via categories, via internal search, via banners, promotions, whatever it is, you want to essentially have them kind of semi-invisible. So yeah, so if someone explicitly requests um, from an external URL or from a referral URL, uh, a discontinued item, absolutely serve that product. But the last thing you want to be doing is for people to be browsing your categories and bumping into products that just haven't existed for years potentially um, or are no longer available. It doesn't make sense. To be clear, I'm not talking about out of stock here. I'm talking about items that are permanently out of stock, if you like, or, or permanently no longer available. So using this John Lewis example here, me searching for Lenovo 710S um, is not returning the, the laptop that we saw on this previous page, which is exactly what I'd expect. And just to reiterate again, the last thing that you wouldn't want is for this particular discontinued item to appear in category pages. It just doesn't make sense. Um, okay, so let's talk about analytics real quick. So by keeping your discontinued products online, you might be in a situation where um, you've chosen to discontinue the product. So it could have been an item that you initially introduced that just didn't sell very well. Um, it could be an item that you no longer needed, no longer wanted, um, wasn't performing, but ultimately something that you decided to pull the plug on rather than, a, a, let's say, a, a, a manufacturer decided to pull the plug on. By keeping the items online, you will start to, you can collect data on how many people have been accessing these products. So a perfect example here, I have a client in um, the world of pharmaceutical and they introduced a allergy medication um, last year, which didn't sell very well at all for whatever reason, which isn't really important right now. But coming into this uh, spring, the traffic to that page has blown up. It's crazy. A lot more people compared to the year before and I'm looking at this particular item. So what that now means is companies can take a look at whether they bring a product back in because they have the intel. They have stats in their Google Analytics or their Adobe Analytics account that says X number of people are now looking at this item that we decided to turn off, that we decided not to sell. And that could be really powerful because it can help you try and stay on trend. It can help you make sure that just because an item is no longer available doesn't mean that it has to be that way permanently. If there's more traffic, if there's more demand, if there's more requests for it, then hey, bring it back. And that could be a really, really solid win there for you as well. So I think we've covered a number of bases. We've covered SEO in detail. We've covered how providing a better experience um, showing alternative items and keeping the product page alive is, is really quite important. Um, I've also showed who's doing it well and who's not. So Curry's, as we said, are doing great. They're just killing their products, you know, killing things with 404s, which isn't good. Um, but even some, you know, John Lewis is doing better. They have a, a product or a number of products. You know, another example here um, of products they don't have online or whole brands they don't have online anymore that they're keeping online. Um, but you can also do better, you know, offering direct replacements, removing these things from the index after a certain amount of time, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, episode one of Let's Talk Shop. 
discontinued products. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your feedback, any questions you may have. Uh, please ping me an email back to, to the newsletter um, and I'll, I'll try and get those questions answered for you. But it's been fun. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you take something from it. I'd love to know um, what other things you'd, you'd love to hear about. If you've got anything you feel I've missed out, hey, let's talk about it. But thanks for joining me in episode one. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, take care and I'll see you on the next one.